In East Africa, the Kenyan government is ignoring a court order to restore operations at the three television stations. Kenya's High Court Thursday ordered the government to allow the country's three largest television stations back on the air after they tried to broadcast images of the mock inauguration of opposition leader Raila Odinga on Tuesday. A day before the court ordered, uh, the Kenya government uh, uh, was defiant in its decision to shut down the television stations. But the High Court wants media workers to return to work, ordering the government not to interfere with the stations until a case disputing the shutdown is heard. The United States is expressing serious concerns about Odinga's self-inauguration and rejected actions that undermine Kenya's constitution and the rule of law. The U.S. is also urging the government to respect freedom of expression and implement court orders calling to restore television broadcasts. Now, for more perspective on the situation there, David Monda, a political analyst and professor at City University of New York, joins me by phone from Nairobi. Good evening, Professor Monda. Good evening. Uh, do you fear that uh, Kenya is going back to the dark days of the regime of Daniel Arap Moy of Kanu? I think uh, that is the big fear here on the ground. Uh, not only from uh, human rights activists, but from a wide range of Kenyans across the uh, political spectrum. Uh, these are the kind of things that uh, the country had expected to have uh, gone beyond uh, in 2017. But uh, unfortunately, this uh, harkened back to the uh, 80s and the 90s and the 70s when um, the rule of law and uh, violation of freedom of the press and speech were a uh, common space, uh, you know, within the Kenyan political spectrum. Now, from what you are hearing on the ground there, do you see government officials justifying their actions and uh, kind of, uh, in a way, justifying their breaking of the law of the land? You see, uh, unfortunately, this is what is very mystifying because uh, on one hand, uh, you know, the government spoke uh, person and the um, uh, principal secretary and secretary of uh, the interior say that they want to abide by the rule of law uh, in, in terms of their pronouncement. But clearly what's happening on the ground is a direct violation of freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and a violation of the Constitution. And quite frankly, um, this uh, is particularly unfortunate because uh, within the eastern Central African region, Kenya has been a beacon for the freedom of press and freedom of speech and has actually enacted a very progressive constitution in 2010, which guarantees these freedoms. So going forward, I really see uh, the courts uh, ruling in favor of, of uh, the petitioners that this is a violation of the rights of the media houses, not only to conduct their business, but to inform the public within a free um, um, environment for speech mm -hmm. and for press. Yeah. But, but also, they will, the government will be forced to compensate the media houses down the road for yeah. financial loss, um, irrespective of whether they decide to ignore court orders or not. Uh, but we've seen in the past the government uh, kind of display a disregard for court. Uh, w do you fear also that the country, the government, might actually uh, decide to undermine the courts? I, I, I fear that is, uh, is a scenario going forward. Um, as we remember in the, uh, uh, the election uh, petition uh, going back to last year, uh, the judiciary, the Supreme Court justices uh, went, were uh, actually intimidated and threatened yeah. directly by the government. So there seems to be a threat in terms of the judiciary. Uh, and now this has actually turned towards the, the press and uh, the three major media houses. Let's not forget that currently the main source of news that's actually being televised is the government station, the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, and K24, which is a private station associated with uh, the president. Mm -hmm. So there well, is a uh, great shutting down of the media space, and this, again, is a big concern because this issue of impunity and disregard for the rule of law 
is very prevalent in numerous countries um, across the continent of Africa. And unfortunately, oh. Kenya was heretofore considered to have been very progressive, very uh, enlightened in terms of freedom of the press and okay. speech and enlightenment of the public. So, but uh, it appears oh. that we're going back to the uh, dark days of impunity. A very, very worrying and unfortunate development. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Monda. We actually do appreciate your insight very much. David Monda is a political analyst and professor at City University of New York.